Okay, let's look at this sample letter, the sample business letter. So I wanted to show you how to go about creating your letterhead and then, of course, um, formatting. So if you will double click at the very top of the your Microsoft Word document, you're going to open up the header and or the header and footer section, but you're going to be in the header. So letterheads must begin at the top half inch margin. So you know with your first letter you wrote the regular business letter from, a, from an individual not from a company and your letterhead had to start at the top left one inch margin. You have one inch margins all the way around. So in the business letter because you have a letterhead the letterhead is up in the uh, le in the header section and it takes up minimal space you do not want your letterhead to come way down the page. It should take up no more than an inch and a half, two inches. So you can see mine. I have my ruler turned on. You can turn on your ruler by going to view and then turning on the ruler so you can see the ruler. And you can see that um, this is about, here's the one inch mark right here, a little bit over an inch. So it starts at half an inch and then we've got another a little over half an inch uh, for our letterhead. And then I closed out the letterhead and you can see how it lightens up. If I had more pages, every single page would have the same letterhead. See? That's what you want. Okay, and it's easier to do that. So just put it up in there and when you're finished, choose a little selection to X out of the header and let me say if the if you don't have a little X to X out of the header for some reason if you will double click in the body of your paper uh, outside the header it will close the header and you can work in your paper so I just copied and pasted the information from Mark Reynolds and Financial Services I added a little bit of you know styling to it um, and notice how I have the physical address here if I would have had to put the physical address, address and the phone number and the fax number and the web address in the top, I would have had to have made them very tiny so that they could all fit up here and make Mark Mendelssohn uh, font a lot smaller font. I ended up using about a, about a 23 or 24 point font. So I'm unable to see it right now because my, of my recording, but that's okay. Uh, and then this is an 11 point font and this is all 11 point font. So this is just a template for you to see what to put for, for you to see how to organize your paper and what goes where. So I told you right here, if this information goes beyond the 2.5 mark, put the company name on this line. I should have said and the department actually but in this case well in any case you do not want to put uh, anything in the uh, inside address that's going to reach the, or extend beyond the midpoint it's just sloppy looking so in this case you could put her name and you could put president on this line and then you could put board of directors comma uh, actually I would probably put president and board of directors on the second line. So you could do president, comma, board of directors. And then the next line put uh, the court appointed, what is it, court appointed. I don't remember the full name of it, and I don't bet I can't see it from here. Let me see if I can look at it right quickly. She is a national court appointed special advocate. So that's what she work, who she works for. And of course, I'm going to take this off and remove the italics. Okay, that's how it would look. And you would, of course, delete all this. Okay. Alrighty, so I just want to show that that to you right quickly. It's important that you don't reach way out, and you can see how far, how long that title is. So you just don't want to have it on the same line with anything else. It's too long, and you don't want to put Casa. You want to put the full name. Casa is just the shortened version that you can use in your the body of your paper after you type out the full name one time. Okay. 
and then this this template has got mixed punctuation with a colon here and a comma here that's preferential if you don't like that you can get rid of the comma and the colon but you have to get rid of both remember you can't have one and not the other traveling pairs and then this is just telling you what is in each one of these so I wanted to show you in that for my letterhead because I didn't put everything in the header I also put some stuff in the footer and you get to the footer the same way just double click down here at about the half an inch mark and then this is going to pop up for you it's all it's nice and neat it's in the same font you can have the company name in a different font um, but whatever you use here if you do a header and a footer you should use the same one here don't mix up and have a bunch of different uh, fonts and different colors and all that keep it very business looking and you see my note here do not use this letterhead it's a sample create your own I just wanted you to see how it should look so you can make sure that your yours is the same way I want to point out something that I've seen in a lot of people's papers um, grading this semester and this is this is the issue people think that this looks so nice and they put in they choose to use this full justification feature because they think it looks nice to have this perfect straight line here well this is not business and I will tell you for for Microsoft Word to create this perfect straight line over here it has to add spaces between words it's the only way it can do that and you lose points two points for every additional space between words so do not use the full justify always use the left so it's called align left or left align every time is it is default so do, please do not go in and add that and then of course I've given you here the basic what I told you earlier okay had to make a little correction on that you can see that the initials come below your name and title and then the enclosure if you mentioned an enclosure if you mentioned anything in the letter that you had included something then you would put the notation enclosure so I hope that this little walkthrough with this uh, with the second business letter formatting is has been helpful remember create your own do not use mine um, if you submit your letter on my letterhead then and it tells you right here do not use it <laughs> if you use it then of course your formatting will be a zero because you have to format yourself um, please let me know if you have any questions um, I hope that this has been beneficial and I hope to talk to you later bye bye